Hi, this is your friendly neighborhood, Pepe. What I'm going to show you here is how to use mutation uh, mutation testing uh, for your for your own uh, advantage during the unit test creation. Basically, in this case, I'm going to use Eclipse. I'm not going to use IntelliJ because I like these plugins because they are more uh, useful for these purposes. Anyway, we know we all love IntelliJ and we will keep using it but in this case I will use Eclipse please don't kill me because of that here we have an example for TDD katas that basically what we need to do is create a business logic class that business logic class will have one method get price this method is going to calculate the price for an amount of items and the standard price of 17 pesos but we have discount if we buy 20 or more we will get 15 pesos per each item and if I have a coupon again I will have 15 pesos so basically this is the logic and I take advantage of the plugins that I run in the coverage basically we have one method that will uh, will be used for our test that is called should get price it will receive the amount of items if I have a coupon and which is the expected price right then we will have an assertion and we'll have the price that I'm expecting I will create a, a new class a new object of the class business logic and I will invoke the method get price it will receive the amount of the coupon so the intention of this method is to be reused during uh, all the unit testing so let's see the first test what I want to test first is that if I have one item and I don't have a coupon I will get 17 pesos price okay so if I run my coverage I will get 88 dot nine percent of line coverage that sounds great if I don't have any clue which is the which is the scope on how many lines I have but I know that in my code in my production code I have this class that has just four line of codes and I'm just covering this condition and this return method for the condition I can check here that I have two of four branches have been missed during this testing and I'm, but I'm getting an 88% of line coverage so it sounds pretty good anyway our our intention always is to try to run unit tests to cover all the functionality so in case other developer change the functionality I can get uh, I can be uh, aware because one of my unit tests is going to fail so I will try to run my second test in this case I already have the test so I will just uh, uncomment it and basically in this test what I want to do is if I have one item but I have a coupon I want um, a price a different price with a discount basically 15 so again I will run my test and both tests pass so it's everything is green looks good and my coverage is a hundred percent so I have a hundred percent line coverage so as I said in my presentation this this means nothing really because if I want I can change I can remove this assert and I can run everything and I will get again a hundred percent coverage so this coverage by itself it's a metric but I don't think this is enough to say you are safe your code is going to be bulletproof what we're looking here is to have a bulletproof code and this metric alone is not very useful really in the other hand we have branch coverage or conditional coverage and you can see here the diamond that says 
Okay, we have increased our branch cover ash. We have now four branches and I just missed one. So that's great. Right? Anyway, I need to do more work to be covered. So what I'm going to do here now is trying to test what about the amount. If I have an amount bigger than 20, so uh, I will get discount price. So I want to test that too. So basically, I'm going to pass a hundred items. I will have no coupon, and I'm expecting to have 15 uh, multiplied by 100. I ha would have the result is going to be 1,015, uh, 500. Sorry. So let's run this. Awesome. So I have a hundred percent branch coverage. And uh, sorry, line coverage and a hundred percent branch coverage. That's great. So the question is, my code is bulletproof, and I can say no because the best explanation I have for this is basically how many possibilities we have in this code. First, we have the amount. I have two choices. The amount can be lower than twenty equal to 20 and bigger than 20 right in the other hand I have the has coupon flag can be true or false in case all the conditions are false I will get an amount of 15 that's fine in case I have a coupon that's fine I am going to get a 15 but what about this condition I'm covering everything let's check that I'm going to make a small change, a mutation here, and let's see how it goes. I'm going to remove equals. So this is a different code, and I will run it. Okay, so again I have 100% coverage, all my tests passed, everything is green, but I made a change, and nobody noticed that. We don't want that, we want a bulletproof code, so our unit test should be prepared to detect this. In this case, came Pete came to help us. So basically, what I want to do is to check how many mutations my code and my test can handle. So I already installed here the PIT uh, plugin. So I want I will run it. Okay, so my mutants are already there, so I will check two things. First, the summary I have. Okay, so here is showing that I have a 100% line coverage, but my mutation coverage is 86%. So, six from seven mutations are covered. That's pretty fine, but we can take this to 100, right? If I can hear in this summary, I can go here, check my class business logic, and this framework is going to show me that from three mutations I get here. First, let's see something that is good. Uh, here we have a mutation that is multiplying, change for division. Okay, this was killed, that mutation was killed, that's fine. And in the other hand, I changed the return for add value and that were killed that's good I'm killing the mutants here what happened is when I change the boundary that basically the boundary is 20 when I change it the mutation survived that means that I'm not covering pretty well the boundaries but when I negate the conditional the conditionals those mutants were killed let's see in a fancy way. Here I said I have seven mutants to kill, but I have killed six. Right? This is going to show me in a in if I make double click here, it will show me where it's where the conditional was negated. That's great. Where the multiplication was changed with division and so on, right? So the kill mutants were six, but one survived. Let's see the survivor. 
and the Subaru was basically the conditional boundary so if I change this 20 for 21 everything looks fine because my tests are not taking into account the boundary that is 20 so let's fix this okay so I create one last test for this that is basically test the boundary 20 what happened if I have 20 okay if I have 20 I want to have to get 300 of price because basically 20 per uh, multiply by 15 is 300 so let's see how it goes now let's run again the pit okay now I have a hundred percent mutation coverage let's see my mutations everything was was killed okay this is all I have to show this time I hope you enjoy seeing the difference between line coverage conditional coverage and mutation coverage now you know the importance of this tool because with this tool what we can check really is how good are our unit tests and how uh, we can which are the pieces that we are missing in our unit test okay uh, see you next time bye